We're going to get started now. Now you'll have to, I'm going to apologize ahead of time tonight because I've got a lot of uh, information to flick between on my tablet. So if I get lost with any information, I apologize for any delays. Okay, so tonight we're going to be looking at comedy. So with comedy, we're not really looking for, oh, sorry, I wouldn't particularly classify comedy as a plot. I'd classify it more as a genre. So rather than learning about how to structure uh, a, a comedy story, we're going to look for some ways that we can maybe put some more jokes into our stories, make them a bit funnier, um, and yeah, just explore how we can use humour and comedy when we're telling stories. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to be looking at uh, comedy. Uh, okay, so welcome to lesson six. Um, so last, not last week, sorry, the week before we were talking about uh, voyage and return stories. Uh, so just quickly, who can tell me something about voyage and return stories? Who remembers a part of the, yes, lamb. The voyage and return story have, have four plots with dream, the frustration, the nightmare, and the thr thrilling escape and return. Very good. Very good. And and the voyage and return story, just like the quest story, but it's return to the end. That's right. Very good. So a voyage and return story is very similar to a quest. The main difference is the quest story is about the journey to get to the to where you're going, and a voyage and return is more about what happens once you get there. So you'll remember that in the, uh, the voyage and return, it was usually some kind of teleportation or some kind of magic that ended our character up where they were going to have their voyage and return. So very good, Lamb. That was a very good uh, description and summary of the voyage and return stories. Does anybody else have something they would like to add to what Lamb said? Okay, Lamb, I think you said it all. Good job. Um, so let's move into uh, getting some comedy happening now. Um, who has a funny story or a funny joke that they would like to share with the class? Let's see if you can get us all to laugh. Does anybody have a joke or a funny story they'd like to share? Kevin, very good. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, wait a minute to I read this. Uh, uh, this is my uh, story, yes. Uh, once upon a time in the earth, a guy dies, and after he dies, he is sent to the hell like other dead people in the world. Then, uh, then when he arrived, rode the hell, Satan meet him, shows him doors to three rooms in the hell. And Satan says, that this guy must choose one of three rooms to spend 
and turn IT in. When they go to the first room, people in people in the room are standing in that up to the neck to the neck. The guy says, No, let me see the next room, please. Then in the second room, people in the room are standing in that up to the nose. When the guy see that, he says no again. Finally, Satan opened the third door to the guy's seat. People in this room are standing with that up to their knees, drinking coffee and eating patches, and they are very enjoy about that. The guys, when see this, quickly says to Satan, I will pick this room to stay. Santa and so okay and start to leave the room. And the guy uh, uh, start pouring some coffee. On the way, our Satan yells to all the people in the third room. Okay, coffee bread is over right now. Everyone pat on your head, please. And man start to clean the coffee when he sat and said that. He says, what the hell is happening? Are you mean that we will park our head down the floor? No way. Yes. Oh, that was a that 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 was a good try, Kevin. That was a good try. I think in future you might have to work on your delivery, how you how you say the jokes. But good try, Kevin. Thank you. Lamb, let's hear a joke from you. The story that talks about my bed. Uh, one upon a time, when I was brush my teeth, then go to sleep, I saw a very exclusive and giant hill on my bed. I think someone is in it. So, next morning, I I go to the nurse to find what is going on but i think i'm crazy because why why the big hill is is the big problem to tell the nurse and the nurse also helped me and don't realize my crazy so so she said my bed was very was very old so i need to buy a new one that's good news that is good news. That's very good news. Okay, so let's have a look now. Whoops, Sonny, do you have a joke or a story you'd like to share? A joke or a funny story? Yeah, I like so. <laughs> it's like um, the thief is coming to home and then... Um, but the thief see that... That this family are very poor. So, um, what can um the thief steal from the family? And um, they see the poor fam family is eating well, a noodle. <laughs> uh, he not steal, but he gave him he gave this family a big cable and an iPhone. <laughs> and then like um the family have uh, the very poor iPhone and um, he gave to the thief and the thief have his iPhone is very pro than that so uh, he trades that <laughs> and it's like a thief is not still but the thief is very kind <laughs> he the thief is like helping the poor family well you guys certainly do not lack imagination. I will give you guys that much. You certainly have very active imaginations. We'll go two more. Kevin first. Yes. Do you have uh, another joke you'd like to share? Uh, no, only his. Ah, no worries. Lamb. Another joke is about a fly who, uh, who forgot his name. Once upon a time, there was a fly who liked to work 
and help others. On a festival day, um, the fly was interesting about the festival, so it's go and asking everyone what is going on. But it doesn't know what its name to introduce with with everyone, so it forgot its name. Okay, well, good try, Lamb. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on now. So the first thing that I would like to talk to you about is uh, so elements of comedy. So these are the things that we need to, or the, these are the important things that we need to consider uh, when we are going to try to write a story that's got lots of comedy and lots of jokes in it. Okay, so tonight, as you know, we're doing comedy. Next week, we'll be doing tragedy. And the reason that I wanted to tell you that is because uh, I want you to kind of consider comedy and tragedy to be the complete opposite of each other. So uh, comedy is more lighthearted and happy. We'll usually have a happy ending to it. A tragedy is usually a sad story. Lots of sad things happen. It usually has a sad ending. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that because uh, that will also help you with your ideas for tragedy next week too. So I've got a list of a few things that I think are important uh, when we're trying to write a comedy. Now, this is not necessarily the jokes themselves. This is not anything to do with that. This is just details about the story that we should consider if we're going to write a story with lots of jokes in it. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'll actually super quickly... Start a whiteboard, Okay, so the first thing we need to consider when we're writing a, uh, a a comedy story or a story with lots of comedy in it is substance. So I'm just going to write this down, then we can talk about it for a moment.
Okay, so the first one is substance. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So substance is pretty much the all of the specific details about the story. So the decisions you make about the characters, uh, the events that happen in the story, um, and even your choice of words. So things like your tone. Uh, are you uh, are you being you know happy and light when you write your story, or does your story have a lot of big serious words in it? So that's something you want to consider when you write a comedy. You don't want to make the story too deep and dark and sad uh, because you'll make it a lot harder for your audience to find your jokes funny then. Okay, so number two is communication. And when we talk about communication, uh, we mean this specifically in the sense of comedy in this instance, but this is your ability to tell your readers what is funny. So, you know, what's funny about what's happening in your story? Why should they laugh? Uh, and when I say that, I, I, I don't mean to actually explain it to your reader. So don't write, this is funny because this happened and blah, blah, blah. Um, these are things you want to consider before you write the story to make sure the jokes are funny. Um, and yeah, so this this can come down to, you know, details in your story, like how is your character feeling? Um, and how do you want that to affect your reader? Um, because there have been a lot of situations where something funny will happen and everybody is in on the joke. Everybody gets to laugh together. And, you know, those are good jokes. But there are also jokes, that there are also things that can happen that are funny that happen at somebody's expense. So maybe you're walking next to your friend and they're looking at you so they don't see and they walk into a light post. That hurts your friend. Like your friend's going to have a sore head. They might be a bit embarrassed or upset or angry because they walked into the light post, but you, you might find that funny. So there are situations when, you know, maybe your character's getting frustrated by something and that's what's so funny. Um, 
so yeah uh, and so your ability to communicate those things or those details is what's going to help make your jokes very funny lamb yes do you have a question fun fact fun facts about comedy story the Go comedy on. story was the first time made on ancient greece and okay. Right. Who make who make is it's interested is Charlie Chaplin. Did you know? Let me see if I can find it here. Uh comedy has its roots in the that come from the Latin word comedia, which actually means to reveal information while singing. Uh, because a lot of comedy used to be very musically based a long time ago. Um, so, uh, but nowadays, obviously, comedy can be words, it can be actions, it can be music. There's lots of different things comedy can be. Okay, so <clears throat> number three is nice and simple, originality. Um, so the more people hear something, the less they find it funny. Um, so don't steal other people's jokes. Think of and create your own. Um, so, yeah, um, have you ever seen, yeah, have you ever seen a a movie or a TV show and had something funny in it and you laugh a lot and then you decide you're going to tell one of your friends when you see them and you tell them the joke and they just don't think it's very funny. Uh, that's that, or that also can happen. A lot of times a joke made by somebody else won't always sound funny when it's told by you or a joke that you make might not sound so funny when somebody else tells it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you create your own jokes, you're able to deliver them in a way that you can make them funny. So that's the importance of number three, be original. Don't, uh, don't copy other people's jokes. Okay, number four is timing and rhythm. Now, this one is going to be, uh, I can explain it to you, but you'll understand it much better if you were to uh, go onto YouTube and watch some stand-up comedy, watch people telling jokes, and then you'll understand what I mean when I say comedy has 
uh, a, a flow to it. It needs to have a certain timing and a certain rhythm. Um, and that's that's more to do with uh, if you were speaking the joke, so you're writing the jokes to like tell them to somebody. Um, but it can still have an effect in a story. So you just want to make sure that you're punctuating your jokes correctly. Um, so yeah, if because if you tell a joke too quickly or you take too long, a joke can lose its impact and the audience may may lose their interest. So uh, yeah, study up and learn about the timing and the rhythm of comedy and doing jokes and it will make it will make comedy so much easier. Okay, so point number five is intelligent writing. So jokes need to be well thought out, have a clear punchline, and they need to be appropriate for their audience. So if I was going to tell this class a joke, I would not uh, uh, make it a joke that had a lot of swear words in it because it's not appropriate for me to be uh using that kind of language uh in in the presence of children in fact it's very bad man it would be very bad manners on my part to do that so i would need to so yeah i would need to make sure that my jokes are appropriate uh bathroom humor is only funny in certain situations so use it wisely so if you were uh, so if you just for an example had to write a speech to deliver in front of, uh, say, the president of Vietnam and the Vietnamese government, so really important, high-ranking people, you probably wouldn't want to tell a whole lot of bathroom jokes, so, you know, nothing about farts, poos, wheeze, nothing like that, because um, it, it's, it's, it's very lowbrow, it's not clever, it's not how how do I put it? That sort of stuff can be funny, but again, in the right situations, um, you don't. Uh, people can think that sort of stuff is rude, so you don't want people thinking you are, uh, rude in those situations. Does that make sense? Yeah.
Okay, and number six uh, is the setting. So this refers to the location and anything else regular about your story. So, you know, that may be locations that the characters in your story always go to. That might be the characters that are in most of or every scene of your story. Just what is going to be regular and familiar for your audience? Uh, because regularly reoccurring characters and locations, they can help your audience to want to pay more attention to your stories. Uh, because, you know, if they read about the same few characters enough, they start to almost build a bond with those characters. They start to invest in their, those characters and they start to care about those characters. And it's when they care, that's when you're going to have an audience of people that just want to read all of your stories. Okay, so those are the six basic elements of comedy that I want you to uh, consider. Okay, so uh, we are going to change up slightly the interactive discussion. Uh, instead, I'm going to read you guys. I'm going to read you guys some jokes. And then let's see if you if we can think about why some of these jokes are funny. Okay. Oh no, those those, those jokes are terrible. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a few jokes and let's try and think about why these jokes might be considered funny. Oh gosh, the turtle burger story. <laughs> I can't even remember how that started now. Um, okay, um, what is a tornado's favorite game to play? What was the tornado's favorite game to play? Who reckons they know? Do you know, Sunny? I, I know some turtle burger stories. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm looking for the answer to my joke at the moment. And the answer is Twister. What was the tornado's favorite game to play? Twister. Uh, Twister is a board game. Uh, I don't know if you guys get it in Vietnam. It's this crazy game where you spin this little wheel and all your hands and your feet are on this big board with different colored dots on it. And wherever the, wherever the spinner lands, you've just got to keep moving your hands and your feet to the different locations, your verse, your friends, and whoever falls over first wins. It's good fun. Okay, so what might be considered funny about that joke? So what we're doing now is we're listening to these jokes and we want to think about why might those jokes be considered funny? 
So who reckons they have an idea? Why was that? Why would that joke be considered funny? Sunny. Oh, so no, I think it's it like some question that is uh, it very exciting and it is like uh, don't uh, people don't know the answer already <laughs> and they want to guess that. Mm. And Good. like um, the tornado can't play. It's like uh, go to it and it, it can't play. So, like we have, we have do the tornado is like people. So it's so fun. Almost. So we see in. Uh, so we see at the bottom of the slide here. We see the word wordplay. That's why that joke would be considered funny because it's a it's a bit of wordplay. So, twister is a type of, uh, so a, a, a twister is a certain type of tornado. Um, and the board game Twister, uh, uh, obviously it was named after that tornado. So it's just a bit of a play on words. So that's why that joke could be considered funny. Um, all right. What does a low uh, what does bread do on holiday? What does bread do on holiday? Loaf around. So that's another example of wordplay because to loaf around means just be lazy, lay around on the couch, do nothing, watch TV, be a couch potato, basically. That uh, Loaf around. Uh, and obviously, you've got the a whole loaf of bread. So that's the joke uh, there in that instance. Yes, Sunny. Um, I think it, the bread is like a cookies that who wants back in Christmas, and like well, like a story. Um, who was the like a magic is in the it like in the bread a bread and the bread can run through this river and he like his adventure and um grandparents keeps like chasing the bread. It's like very, Christmas holiday. Very good. Very good. Okay. So the next thing then that I would like to do is let me find. Yeah. So the next thing that, um, the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is something called comedic structures. So a, a comedic structure is basically, it's basically a different way to tell a joke or it's a different method of telling jokes. So the first one, situational comedy. Has anyone ever heard of that before, situational comedy? Uh, you also might have heard of uh, a type of TV show called a sitcom. Has anyone ever heard of a sitcom before? Uh, so sitcom is short for situational comedy. And it's shows like, hmm, trying to think of some, like a Brooklyn Nine-Nine, if you've ever seen that before. That is a sitcom. Or uh, The Big Bang Theory, that's a sitcom. Young Sheldon, that's another sitcom. Yes, Sunny. Um, can you type it in a chat box and can, can research that? Type it in the chat box and can, can research that? Yeah, sure.
Right, okay. Sorry, guys. I am just writing up a definition of situational comedy. So a situational comedy is a series of stories in which a group of people are usually in the same location for most of it. Maybe like an office or a school or a shop. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, if you're all interested in um, checking out some sitcoms to learn a bit more about, uh, yeah, to to learn a bit more about uh, what they are, how they work, um, then I've given you a list of some to check out there. Friends, God, oh, beautiful work, Lamb. Friends, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Community, Black Books, Arrested Development, The IT Crowd. Very good, very good. Good work, Lamb. Okay, so, so that is a sitcom. Generally speaking, any problems or funny situations in sitcoms, they generally get fixed by the end of each episode they they usually tv shows about half an hour long per episode and all of the problems usually get fixed by the end of each episode uh and there's usually a lot of funny jokes um uh all of the characters trying to be funny and say funny things to each other it's quite good i recommend if 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 you like laughing um sitcoms are a great type of show to check out okay next up we have satire now satire is a type of humor that it's a way to tell a joke uh, it relies on irony exaggeration or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity, uh, bad decisions, uh, particularly in the particularly in the context of politics. So um, if you ever pick up a newspaper, uh, at least all of the newspapers that we get over over in Australia do this, um, they'll usually have some uh, political cartoons and, the cartoons will usually, uh, they will not make the people that they are making fun of, they will not make them look very good. So um, maybe those people uh, made a bad decision. Um, maybe they didn't have their, their citizens' best interests at heart when they made a decision in the government. Uh, maybe they're just really stupid and they shouldn't be working for the government um those sorts of things are what a satirist would make fun of if they were writing something satirical um another thing can be it it, it can just be making fun of somebody or making fun of something um the best Hang on, let me just write this out.
Okay, so satire. We've got humor that use a uh, humor using irony, exaggeration or ridicule, so making fun of somebody to expose somebody's stupidity or bad decisions. It's most commonly used in yeah, uh, it's it's most commonly used in um, politics. Uh, parody or satire. Sorry. All right. Now, the last one that we have to talk about this evening is uh, wordplay. So... There are lots of different techniques. Uh, there, there, there are lots of different things that you can, lo uh, lo lots of different wordplay techniques that you can employ when uh, trying to write a comedy. So uh, the first one that I will uh, talk to you about is called a spoonerism. And this is where you go to say two words. Uh, so when you're saying a sentence, but you get the the first letters of two of the words in it mixed up. So I might say something like, hang on. So um this is this is an example of a spoonerism. Uh I may mean to say I, I, I may mean to say a flock of bats, but I may actually get my tongue twisted up and I may say a block of flats. It sounds very similar and you can use a, a little mix up like that. Uh you can you can tell a pretty good joke uh sometimes using that. Uh, another technique we've got Okay, the next technique uh, that you can use is called a malapropism. And this is where you use a similar sounding but wrong word in a sentence. So an example would be if I if 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 we were watching uh, some some Spanish dancing, for example, I might say, She's an incredible flamingo dancer, but that's wrong because a flamingo is a big pink bird. Uh, the type of dancing is actually called flamenco dancing. So I, if, if I accidentally say the wrong word there, uh, so yeah, that is called a malapropism. Uh, and you can, you can have a lot, you, you can tell a lot of good jokes using techniques like that. Sunny. The first, the first joke that I want to have you is, um, what burger that people can't eat that? What burger that people can't eat? <laughs> Very good, Lamb. Very good. So, okay, Sunny. Uh, what type of what type of burger can people not eat? It's a turtle burger. <laughs> I reckon people could eat a turtle burger, actually. It'd just have to be cooked. 
<risa> ya van a ver hecho. Um, student in public speaking always have been terrible here and you laugh a lot. Pardon? In public speaking, all the students always uh, remember of Turtle Burger and you laugh a lot. Oh, boy. Okay, so the last, uh, the last uh, example of a of wordplay I will give you is called a portmanteau. Can I show one more joke about that? And it like you, it's similar to you. All right, you can tell it. You can tell another joke if you've got. And like an English teacher yeah. wrote these words on the whiteboard: "Woman without her man is nothing." And the teacher then asked the student to punctuate the word correctly. And the student is a boy. Wrote, "Woman without her man is nothing." But the girl wrote, "Woman without her man is nothing." <laughs> oh, very good, Sunny. Thank you. Okay, guys. So the last example that I've got for you is called a portmanteau, uh, which is combining two words to make a new word. Uh, so originally when uh, video cameras came out, uh, they were commonly referred to as camera recorders. Uh, but eventually they combine camera and recorder to make camcorder. So that became the very popular new way, uh, the popular new word to say video camera. Or if you combine smoke and fog, you get smog. So that's how we got uh, the word smog uh, as a uh, uh, as it refers to uh, heavy air pollution. It's a combination of smoke and fog. So yeah, um, we have lots of these little techniques with wordplay that we can use as well. And again, um, like all I can really do is point you in the right direction to these techniques. It's really up to you guys to practice with them, make them. Yeah, like it's it, it's really up to you to uh, to practice these techniques and get good at using them. Uh, no. No, Lamb, that is not, uh, that would not be considered a portmanteau. Because you see book and shop equals bookshop. That is just a contraction. Uh, whereas camera, or sorry, camcorder or smog, you see there are actually missing letters. So letters from each of the words that they take out when they combine them, and that makes the new word. So it's slightly different to the to the idea of uh, bookshop. But I like the way you're thinking, Lamb. That's good. Okay. Very good. That's it, Lamb. Those are all portmanteaus. Okay, so um, I'd like to just share with you guys, just to wrap up, uh, just a couple of more... Oh, 
Okay, so um, I'll tell you a few of them that you can use. Uh, so the first one is called a double entendre. <laughs> okay, so a double entendre is a sentence that is ambiguous or bland enough, not enough detail, that it could mean two different things. One of those things is innocent. And the other and the other can be cheeky or naughty in meaning. So I'll give you an example. Okay, so an example of a double entendre would be a football coach was having a terrible season when he was asked for his opinion concerning the execution of the offense. He replied, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> that is actually quite a good joke. But the reason that that's so funny is because of, uh, so hang on a second. Um, So the term, so the term that can have two meanings in that joke is execution of the offense. So the first meaning of execution of the offense can just refer to that team running a play to score some points. So putting their plan into action, they're executing their offense, their moves to score their points. So the second meaning is that execution is also, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard that term before, execution, get executed. Uh, it means to get killed. Um, or it, yeah, it, it's, it's a way to get killed. And offense can also mean the members of the team that score the points. So now we have our two meanings. Um, when the coach said he would be fine with the execution of the offense, the joke there was that he would be fine if his team would do the plan and score the points, or he would be fine if his if the offensive part of his team got killed, which, of course, he is just joking when he says that. That's why it's funny. So does that make sense, how a sentence can have two different meanings? One can be innocent and the other one can be a bit cheeky or a bit naughty. So that's what a double entendre means.
Okay. The last one that I'll tell you about tonight, and then we'll finish up. Okay, and the other one is called the reverse. And this is when a joke leads you to think option A is the punchline, but then the joke flips and makes the punchline option B, which you were not expecting. So another way to make your audience laugh is basically make them think that you are, make them think that you're going in one direction but then at the last minute you change direction and catch them by surprise and that shock can make them laugh a lot uh, i'll give you an example of that Okay, so my daughter kept crying because she couldn't tie her shoes. Dad, I can't do it, she said. I replied, I keep telling you to not use that word. I'm not your dad. <laughs> Are you acting? <laughs> Excuse me. Still got a bit of a chest thing at the moment. Excuse me. But the reason that that's so funny, and I, I, I think that joke is just absolutely hilarious, but the reason that that joke is funny is because when he says, I keep telling you to not use that word, our, our initial thought is, oh, He's trying to be really positive with his daughter. He's trying to tell her, don't use the word I cannot. Don't say I can't do it. We find a way to do it. So you think he's going to be very, very positive. But then when he says, don't use that word, I'm not your dad. That just came out of the blue. Um, and sometimes a shock like that uh, can make your audience laugh a lot. Um, but yeah, so definitely uh, I would recommend checking out some, uh, some stand-up comedians. Um, make sure you search for stand-up comedians that are appropriate. Uh, try, don't look for the, don't look for the ones with bad language. Uh, there are lots of very, very funny and very clean stand-up comedians. Start with them. All right, so that is actually going to take us to the end of our lesson this evening.
Uh, I'll assign your homework uh, in the Zalo group. Uh, so your yeah, so class is finished now. Um, I'll assign you a ta I'll assign you a homework task in the Zalo group. So keep your eyes peeled, and I'll see you all next week. Um, so yeah, just make uh, so make sure that you uh, I'll I'll send you guys a copy of the. Why is it short? It's not short. We've gone 20 minutes longer than we normally do. Teacher, can I go now? You can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post your homework assignment in the Zalo group. I'll see you all next week. Good night, Goodbye. everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye, teacher. Good night. Goodbye, teacher. Goodbye.